Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to be building up on the concept of the permanent intermolecular forces. We are going to be talking about the permanent dipole-dipole interactions. The word dipole means that within the same molecule you have two poles, which means there are charges within a covalent molecule. We'll see how. Imagine a water molecule which has an oxygen atom and two bond pairs, one with each hydrogen atom. I've even represented the lone pairs. Oxygen has eight protons inside the nucleus, while hydrogen has one proton each. To understand this even further, we magnify the diagram to appreciate how protons are the positively charged subatomic particles, while electrons have negative charge on them. It is just because of the attractions of the nucleus that the electrons are held together between the atoms. And obviously, the eight protons of the oxygen are going to attract these electron pairs even more strongly than the hydrogen atoms. Because nucleus of oxygen atom is equal to eight protons, while the nucleus of hydrogen atom is only one proton each. Obviously, there is more nuclear pull provided by the oxygen atom to the bond pairs as compared to the nuclear pull given by the hydrogen atoms. More nuclear pull will attract the shared pair of electrons towards the oxygen atom and the electrons will be sli slightly drawn towards the oxygen atom and away from the hydrogen atom. This creates a partial positivity or a partial negativity. Oxygen becomes partially negative because it's not completely gaining these electrons, but rather the electrons are a little drawn towards the oxygen atom because of the higher nuclear pull. This phenomena, which creates these kinds of partial charges, can be explained better by the notion of electronegativity. What we just studied the capacity of an atom. The capacity to do what? The capacity of an atom to attract shared pair of electrons. These electron pairs which were shared between these atoms. So the capacity of an atom to attract shared pair of electrons towards itself is called electronegativity. And it largely depends on the nuclear pull provided by the atom. Imagine a nitrogen atom on the left side of the diagram, oxygen atom in the middle, and there's a fluorine atom on the right side of the diagram. Nitrogen has seven protons inside the nucleus, oxygen has eight protons, while fluorine has nine protons. We know this because these are the atomic numbers of the atoms. The atomic number shows us how many protons are there inside their nucleus. More protons can create more nuclear pull. All these atoms are from period two, so they have the same number of shells. And if they bond with hydrogen atom each, hydrogen has the same number of protons each time. So everything depends on the nuclear pull by the nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine atoms. These NH, OH, and FH bonds will have their shared pair of electrons, will have their bond pairs drawn towards the more electronegative atom. The nitrogen will pull these electrons towards itself. The oxygen will do a similar thing and the fluorine atom will also pull these electrons towards itself. It creates a partial negative charge on the more electronegative atom and hydrogen obviously gets a partial positive charge. The dipole in oxygen would be more and in the case of hydrogen fluoride, it would be even more. When a water molecule is formed, it is actually because of the partial negative and partial positive charges that there are strong intermolecular forces. So to study dipoles of various molecules, I am drawing some of the most common molecules over here, like sulfur dioxide, like ammonia molecule with its lone pair and the three hydrogen atoms, like a hydrogen chloride molecule, the HCl, with the lone pairs of the chlorine atom, like 
a carbon with like three hydrogens and one chlorine, which is known as a monochloromethane, a boron trifluoride, and a carbon dioxide molecule. All these molecules have various bond pairs and lone pairs. The SO2 molecule, the BF3 molecule in the center, NH3 with its one lone pair on the right side, a CO2 molecule, HCl molecule at bottom, and CH3Cl molecule at bottom left. Each time the electrons are drawn towards a more electronegative atom, like oxygen does it, fluorine is very electronegative, so the dipole starts moving towards the fluorine atoms. Nitrogen pulls the electrons towards itself, so the partial negative will come on the nitrogen atom. Chlorine is highly electronegative, so it pulls the electrons towards itself, and same is done by the oxygen atom. In the case of SO2, the sulfur atom becomes partially positive and the oxygen becomes partially negative. So the direction of the lone pair would be towards the oxygen side. There is no net dipole in the BF3 molecule because you can see three fluorine atoms are all on a similar angle. So they cancel the net forces. In case of ammonia, the hydrogens are partially positive and the nitrogen along with its lone pair is partially negative. When we talk about the molecules at the bottom, we can see that in CH3Cl, the hydrogens are again partially positive. But chlorine is partially negative because it's highly electronegative atom. It will pull the electrons towards itself. Similar thing can be done in HCl. But when we see carbon dioxide at bottom right, there is again no net dipole because two oxygen atoms are on the same angle. So they pull the electrons but their pole cancels each other. From the idea of dipoles, now let's jump to a similar concept of hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are very similar to the permanent dipole interactions. Indeed, it is a kind of the permanent dipole interactions. Hydrogen bonds are formed when there's a partially positive hydrogen atom. And you know why it's a partially positive atom, because its electrons are drawn towards the other partially negative atom. So these are bonds formed between the partially positive hydrogen atom and the lone pair. I repeat, the lone pair of a partially negative atom. Now which atoms are partially negative? The highly electronegative atoms like fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen. Only these three can form the hydrogen bonds because of their partial negative charges. Imagine a hydrogen fluoride molecule in front of another hydrogen fluoride. The fluorine atom is partially negative while the hydrogen atoms are partially positive because of the difference in electronegativity. There are hydrogen bonds formed between the partially positive hydrogen and the lone pairs of the partially negative fluorine atom. Coming back to the water molecule, remember there were lone pairs of the oxygen atom and it has a partial negative charge. So these Hydrogen bonds are really strong interactive forces and we need a lot of heat energy to break them. That is why these are highly strong kinds of interactive forces. Lastly, the weakest of all the intermolecular forces are called instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces. These are not permanent dipoles. They are not like hydrogen bonds. They are not like permanent dipole forces they are highly weaker than those forces. We can also call them the London dispersion forces. In order to study London dispersion forces, we're going to set three atoms of argon in front of us. These argon atoms have their electrons in their shells, which are obviously randomly arranged in those subshells and the orbitals. Imagine, hypothetically, for one moment, if the electrons of one argon all accumulate on the right side of the atom just because of random chances, it will create a dipole and all the argon atoms around the similar ones will do the same thing. All the electrons in these argon atoms will start moving towards the corner of the atoms. These dipoles are created temporarily. These dipoles are not permanent and they were formed by random chances. 
it depends only on the number of electrons you have. That is why fluorine atoms, which are smaller, have less di like ID ID forces, we can also call them, or the London dispersion forces. Bromine atoms, which are bigger and have more electrons, have more ID ID forces because they have more electrons. So there are more chances of creating those temporary dipoles. And when we talk about iodine, iodine has a very big atom. It has a very large number of electrons. So iodine has a higher chance of creating temporary dipole or you can say London dispersion forces more than bromine and fluorine. That is why fluorine is a gas, bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. This is because of their temporary dipole forces also known as the London dispersion forces or you can call them the ID ID forces which are highly weaker than the hydrogen bonds or the permanent dipole forces.